Hi, I'm Kevin from kevinpowell.co where I help teach people how to make the web and how to make it look good while they're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And you're watching 100 Days of SEO. Today, we are talking about how to create a search monopoly. Uh, if you are new here, uh, my name is Brendan Hufford. I'm the creator of SEO for the rest of us and also 100 Days of SEO. I'm going to leverage all of my ability of just being a regular person and also a former teacher. I spent a decade in the classroom uh, and also all of my experience as the SEO director of Click Studios just to help you demystify and really understand topics related to SEO, AKA search engine optimization. Maybe those are backwards. Maybe it's search engine optimization, AKA SEO. It's fine though. Uh, we're gonna keep it rolling. Here's what we're gonna talk about today on Tutorial Thursday. So some key points. Uh, when we talk about creating a search monop monopoly, uh, we're gonna talk about what it is, why it works, um, I'm going to give you two good examples when not to use this strategy, some examples of when to use it, I'm going to teach you how to use it, and then I'm going to give you a couple case studies uh, of where I've seen it used really effectively. So let's talk about this first. What is a search monopoly? So this is a great definition um, that I am totally stealing from Nick Eubanks from the future. He says, it is moving past the vanity of having your website's URL ranking for your priority keywords and instead accepting that Google ranks different types of content for different types of keywords. And the current type of content on your website may not be able to rank for the terms you're targeting. So it is using other websites that you do not own to rank for keywords that you can't for, and we'll talk about some reasons why, that you can't rank for with your own website. And it takes a lot of humility, but it is extremely effective. This is also called barnacle and parasite SEO, but barnacles and parasites are gross. And I really wanted to be able to use pictures of monopoly the whole time. And I just love that idea of like, this is the monopoly strategy. We can call it parasite SEO. We can call it barnacle SEO. Um, it's called parasite and barnacle because you're literally attaching like a parasite or a barnacle to another high ranking, more authoritative website, which again, is fine, but not really what we're going for here because that's not the goal. Like this is only halfway and you're not a parasite. You're not a barnacle. You're adding value. And the goal of this is not to just attach yourself. The goal is to create a monopoly in search, right? Uh, it's not about ranking number one. Again, from Nick Eubanks, it's not about ranking number one. It's not only about ranking number one. It is about ranking number one, but it is about ranking number one, number two, and number three right? What if you could have three guest posts uh, or three articles? What if the top three articles for one of your main search terms, uh, let's say your search term is CRM software. What if the top three search results all within those pieces of content listed you as number one? Then technically you have the top three search results without even having to rank your own website. It is extremely, extremely powerful as a strategy. Let's talk about why it works. Sometimes search, you know, Google wants a neutral party. When you build content on another website, like a, uh, a good example of these would be anything that reviews stuff, whether it's a coffee review website or, um, you know, if you're on Huffington Post and they have a, an article about like the top 10 pieces of wedding jewelry, or you have, you know, something more in the tech side of things like a G2 crowd or a Captera, they want a neutral party, uh, a seemingly neutral party to rank this stuff. Uh, they also want, you know, these websites are also usually extremely authoritative. And then finally, a large authoritative website can handle getting a bunch of links. Maybe your website is brand new, or maybe you don't want to risk trying to push rankings too fast on your website. I can have a guest post on a big website. I can ha have an article that features me on a big website and I can hammer that big website because they already have 100,000 links from different websites. I can link to my post 50 times without it you know, fluctuating that uh, on their end. It won't hurt their website versus my website. If I all of a sudden build 50, you know, let's say I only have 200 websites linking to me. If all of a sudden I build 50 new links to one post to get it to rank, Google's going to be like, whoa, that's too much. Uh, and you can really get into uh, a bad situation. When not to use the search monopoly strategy. So if you can't find a related website, if you cannot find a related website that is more authoritative than you, this is not a good strategy to use. If ranking for this is going to give you vanity, but it will not drive revenue. 
the link matters, but also the branding and the awareness matter. If this is something that won't drive revenue, for example, um, if I was Ahrefs, who's one of the sponsors of 100 Days of SEO, ranking number one for SEO might drive revenue, but it's not really a direct path. Like, you know, it's just, a, I have a great article on this called uh, Why Rank, you know, I don't bother ranking for trophy keywords. We want rankings that are actually going to drive revenue. So if I was Click Studios and I was a Chicago web design company, yeah, I want to rank number one for Chicago web design, but I also want to rank number one on UpCity. I want to rank number one on Clutch. I want to rank number one on all of these things so that when I rank number one, I've also on the first page, five of those results are me. That's going to drive way more business. We want to monopolize it. Um, and then also if the effort is greater than the reward, right? If you are a local, um, you know, diner, monopolizing search is not really going to be uh, worth the reward. Whereas if you're a web design company, it really would be. Here's when to use the search monopoly strategy. And I'm using some good examples here of uh, websites that you can use in this as well. YouTube, Medium, and Quora. It's really the only use I think uh, Medium has anymore. Uh, number one, you have a direct path to revenue. Getting this placement, ranking number one for this term, this is a revenue driver. This will drive people, not just the link that matters, but also when I'm on this other website, people will click through and they will become customers. And I'll give you some case studies of this here in a second. Uh, but also you have a good list of target sites and you can build links. If you don't know how to build links, like this is not the strategy for you. Yeah, like just worry about getting your own stuff done. Learn how to build links uh, effectively. You don't have to even learn to do it at scale. But you don't want to spend like two months building a link to somebody else's website. You know, if that if your process is still takes a while, you want to really consider um, when the strategy starts to make sense. So this is my kind of like if I were to give you a really basic understanding of how to monopolize search, right? We don't want to rank our own website. So here's what I do. Before I even get started, I study what's already ranking. This is such a crucial step that so many people miss. So I'm going to say it again. Study what is already ranking. Google the thing you want to rank for. So many people just jump into SEMrush and Ahrefs and uh, whatever other tool and they forget to just Google what is already ranking and look at that. Then before you start writing anything, pitch a site that ranks for related keywords. See if you can uh, get a guest post there. See if one of the writers uh, that writes a lot about it for that website is open to including you in their next article. Then conduct some topical and keyword research, write a badass article, and then just chill chill for a minute and just wait see where it kind of settles out are you on the first page you know again like if i if it's on a really authoritative website that's really going to help you but like see where you end up ranking um i have tons of guest posts that i am constantly trying to like push up in rankings i have a great guest post on epic content marketing on uh, fizzle.co and i'd be lying if i don't want that i want that to rank number one for content marketing i do why? Because like I want to be number one. Now, is brendanhufford.com going to rank number one for content marketing? No. Fizzle's older. It's more authoritative. And, um, you know, it's just one benefit of doing guest posting and things like that. And it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be guest posts, but this is kind of my tactic and how, where I would do it if I was just starting out. If I were you and you're starting out. Um, wait, and then only build links if necessary. See where you kind of settle out on there. Uh, now, here's advanced. So you've heard me mention Nick Eubanks a couple times. Here he is with his photo at the top. This is how Nick recommends doing it. Identifying your top 50 to 100 highest priority, uh, and I put in their value keywords. These are, again, they're not high priority because of their search volume or their whatever. These are going to be value-driven. These are going to be ones that can actually drive revenue for you, drive conversions, and drive sales. Then scape, scrape page one of Google for all the ranking URLs. Again, I like to use Ahrefs. So I look at the top 10, but you can also in your settings build that out. So page one can include 20 up to 100. Uh, Nick then pulls back baseline trust and authority metrics. And there's some examples here. Uh, mapping a content type to each. Again, like we want to make sure that our content type, what we are creating is the same type of content that Google wants to rank for that, right? We don't want to create some sort of long form instructional uh, if what they're looking for is really like a comparative analysis of things. So then number four, sort by content type, create a new list for each, use that data to inform the SEO content map and get cracking. Again, like this is more advanced. You also have the option to just go with a more basic idea, but it, they both work.
They both work. It just depends on where you're at. Are you doing this out alone? Are you a consultant? Are you um, at a small agency or maybe only a couple clients? And then are you doing this at scale? You have a big team, you have access to a bunch of tools and you have really good processes in place. There's other tactics too. And I'm gonna highlight, this is Ryan Stewart here on the right. I'm gonna highlight Ryan a couple more uh, in a couple more examples. But here's how Ryan uses uh, the search monopoly strategy, attacking branded keywords. So I'm Pitchbox and people are Googling like Pitchbox alternatives. Well, I'm not gonna rank for like Pitchbox alternatives on pitchbox.com because Google knows like this is just you talking to yourself, it's bias. But if we can have a neutral website, that has an article on Pitchbox alternatives. If we could have that be on, I don't know, G2 Crowd, all of a sudden, like you can attack those branded searches and you could do it for your competitors. So one of their competitors is probably like Buzzstream. Buzzstream alternatives would be a great article that we could get up uh, somewhere else that then features Pitchbox as like the favored kind of result uh, or favored tool to use as a Buzzstream alternative. Then stealing review searches. So people will invariably, when you get to scale, they'll look for reviews of your companies. People look for reviews at Google for, uh, they Google Click Studios reviews. They Google um, Pitchbox reviews and Hrefs reviews and Flywheel re reviews. But if I'm if I'm Flywheel, which is who I host with, uh, if you know if I'm Flywheel, then I, Flywheel reviews might be on Flywheel's site. They might be able to rank for that. But if it's on a more authoritative uh, site it would be good to also have that in there as well and then finally leveraging the reach of e-commerce giants so if you're an e-commerce company or thinking of starting your own store um you can then pursue and this is a great monopoly strategy i want to rank my stuff within amazon i want to rank number one in amazon because we know if you've ever googled anything related to shopping you know google loves showing those amazon links um, if i rank well in amazon the likelihood of my amazon store ranking better in google is you're going to rank way better with an Amazon store than with your brand new Shopify website. So it's something to think about. These are just other tactics. Uh, an example. So Ryan literally wrote this article in 2015 uh, on Moz called Why I Stopped Selling SEO Services and You Should Too. This article written in 2015, we're in 2019. This article still ranks for SEO services. So you can see here on the left, we have ads. We have a number one up here, uh, Main Street Host SEO services. So again, like affordable, you know, whatever, whatever. Here's local ones based on where I live. You can see Northwest Indiana and Chicago here. But then you see Ryan's article. This has produced so many leads for them. It pushes back to the Weberist blog and like it just, it, the results and everything have been absolutely huge for them. It's huge, like the number of sessions and the number of uh, users and then the number of conversions, right? Like it's absolutely massive, the number of conversions they're getting directly from this article on somebody else's website. Another example from this, I'm gonna use another one from Ryan because uh, he's really good at this. And I know it's in the SEO space and talking about SEO in the SEO space is kind of stupid sometimes, but it's a good example. Because like, look, he, he wrote this article about white hat link building, 19 link building strategies that work in 2018. Great, he ranks number 27 for white hat link building. But his guest post on Hrefs, what he wrote in 2017, ranks number one. So this is a 2018 article, here's a 2017 article. So an older article, but on a more authoritative domain, ranks number one. Now just imagine if you're not in the marketing space, how powerful this is. People in the SEO space, people in the marketing space, are going so hard at this. They're already using this tactic. This is a known thing. But what if you're not in the SEO space? The opportunity is so big. It's so big. Wouldn't somebody love it if you would come to them and just say like, hey, I write really good, I'd love to write a guest post for you. I wanna rank it number one in Google for these things. So all of that traffic will go to your website. That's what I want. I want you to get all of the traffic, but I want them to see my article there. Like, would you be interested in me creating an insanely high quality piece of content for you that will rank really well in Google? Um, all of a sudden people are just like, yeah, like I want that. I want something really amazing. So don't, don't leave your, and this is kind of corny, but like don't leave your results to chance, right? Like the monopoly strategy is so powerful. Whether you're starting out, like I don't have a good website, so I'm just trying to get ahead. Or if you're a veteran and you're like, I'm already ranking for this, but I don't wanna just rank number one. I wanna rank number one, two, three, four, and five and get almost 100% of the clicks. Um, 
that's when it really becomes powerful. I hope this has been extremely helpful. Please subscribe. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, please subscribe. If you are watching on YouTube, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please leave a comment. And if you're listening on the podcast, for sure, send me a tweet uh, and answer this one question. How can you use the search monopoly strategy in your business? Like, what business are you in and do you think you can use this strategy? And if you don't think you can, please tweet me or leave a comment below if you're watching the video because I want to be able to help you. I want to answer that question for you. Hey, Brendan, I don't think this will work for me because X, Y, and Z. And I want to help you figure out exactly how this strategy can work for you. I've been Brendan Hufford. Don't forget to work hard, be nice to people, and don't get too lost trying to create something that matters. (laughs) 